Hi everybody, welcome to the QB School. I am JTO Sullivan. Today we are talking about my three most disliked play calls while I was playing. Fired up for this one, let's dive into it. Welcome to the QB School. So this question comes from Matthew Gian. Hopefully that's how you pronounce your last name. Sorry, bro. In your playing days, what were like the top three concepts backslash plays you hated being called? Matthew, love this question. I'm going to answer it and then I'm going to kind of flip it on its head and provide kind of a different perspective of just playing and more of coaching play calling. So top three concepts that I hated most when I was playing being called. Okay, go with me here. Uh, any run is the first answer. Now, I played mostly before the age of the true kind of RPO framework, RPO type of concepts that were married together. So really a run was a run just about all the time. You could maybe flip it or change to a different run. But essentially, if you were calling a run, you were not going to have the ball in your hands, making a decision, throwing it down the field, those types of things. And so for me, I can recall a number of times having different coaches tell me how bad my body language was when a run call would come in, either through the headset or through the signal from the sideline. Uh, they thought coaches could tell what the play type was going to be run or pass just on my body language. And uh, I kind of took that sideways for a long time. I think there's a flip side to that coin, honestly, that uh, I know this probably will rub certain coaches, people the wrong way. But there's an element of not great body language to me that shows you care. Uh, I really do think that that's kind of true. I don't ever want someone with perfect robot like features out there. And so there's an element of bad body language that I think shows that you care, that you're invested that certainly that you believe in yourself in these types of situations. Now, was it always uh, the best decision or the best kind of model of behavior? No, but uh, to me, I just used to get frustrated when I felt like we were better throwing the ball and we were running it and maybe we were running it a little too much. And, uh, you know, depending on the coordinator, the play caller, uh, those things, you butt heads over the course of a career uh, with certain ideologies. And so for me, and this is an honest truth, uh, any run call was going to be one of my least favorite calls. Then from that, now really probably what you really want to get into, passing concepts here. My least favorite concepts to play, uh, there's a number of them, but uh, I joke around a lot on this channel about spacing, but spacing is right up there. And so to me, spacing, just real quickly, is anything with a kind of an individual route, quick game wise, usually slant, hitch, quick out, whatever, and spacing, kind of a sit over the ball, a hitch, and something in the flat. And it's just a pure progression, left to right or right to left, all the way across the field. To me, it was fine if it was true zone, not any type of match zone, where you're gonna have tight kind of coverage on any of those kind of non-first reads. So that first read, hitch, slant, quick out, whatever. If you don't throw that and win versus press cut versus man coverage, uh, you're probably not gonna have anything else. And it, it's just a, an unnecessarily difficult play versus man coverage. And then zone coverage, I just think there are better things further down the field than throwing a five-yard sit over the ball as a second read or a hitch on the backside, you know, trying to come all the way back across. I also didn't love the footwork that used to be tethered to that back in the day. It was really three plus two, so you take three under center. If it wasn't there, you'd almost shuffle back. It was just a, it was a lot of work for minimal gain, in my opinion, and oftentimes it never worked. Now, I think it does serve a purpose maybe in mini camp world or spring ball world where you're trying to teach young quarterbacks full field reads, kind of going left to right or right to left. I think they can fit there as a teaching tool. But if we're going to go out there on Sundays or Saturdays or Friday nights and run spacing, uh, it wasn't for me. Then the final concept that I was never a fan of calling were, I think the first time I answered this question, I said mirrored speed outs. I'm going to change, amend that to mirrored quick outs. So I just think there are better stuff. There is better stuff than that. I think it can be a, a little bit of a, of a decent play in the wide hash world, college, high school, because you can just throw that boundary. But again, if we're throwing a boundary quick out, I'd rather throw a hitch. I don't love throwing a quick out, harder throw, uh, usually catch, tap your feet in, out of bounds, and it's a six-yard gain. And so, you know, I just don't love that. I think that there are better things than mirrored speed outs, mirrored quick outs, things like that, that allow us to take advantage of what the coverage is, what the matchups look like, versus pick a side type mindset and being able to go out there and throw a really difficult throw, in my opinion, you know, a field speed out or any really kind of a quick out for a minimal gain as opposed to catching something with our guy running downhill towards the end zone. 
So to me, I think speed out uh, glance is the same throw, just a different angle. Let me say that again. Glance or bang eight and a speed out, a three cut is really the same throw, just with a different angle. Same thing with a slant and a quick out. But I think the better thing is that you're running downhill at the end zone. And so that was always kind of my mindset. I just didn't love the fact that spacing didn't really give me a great option versus man coverage or match coverage. And then the mirrored speed out is just unnecessarily difficult. I'd rather throw, you know, mirrored slants or, you know, get into something where we can split the field with two different concepts and base it off coverage, shell, look, matchups, etc. So those are my three least favorite things. Any run, and this is least favorite things when I was playing, uh, any run, spacing, and then mirrored speed outs or quick outs. So let's flip it. Now, least favorite calls when I am play calling or kind of the offensive architect or coordinator. Uh, this is going to be kind of a, a I, I want to say a little bit of coach speak, but I really do think that it, it, it is a window into at least how I do it and how I think many people do it that I admire that call plays that are the architect of their offense. And to me, I don't, there is no favorite play. Like, I just don't care. I'm not tethered to the play, to the X's and O's. I don't, I, I don't, that's just not how I think of football. I really do think of football as I want as the play caller to get the ball in our best player's hands as much as possible. So that's my favorite play call. My least favorite play call is when the ball ends up going into our fifth best player on the field's hands. Now, if I can manufacture that to be the case rarely, I think I'm doing a good job as far as manufacturing guys open or calling plays that put our best guys in positions to go out there and make six successful plays, big plays, explosive plays. But I don't want our fourth best receiver having you know the most amount of touches or targets. To me, that's a sign of an offense that I don't necessarily care about balance. I know that that probably spits in the face of certain people, but I really want our best player to get the ball. If he's covered or not available, I want our second best player to get the ball. And that's going to change. It can change in series, in quarter, in game, uh, certainly year to year. But to be able to evaluate, okay, these is, this is our best player. These are our best players. Let's try to manufacture as many plays as possible to get them the ball based on what our opponent's doing and what we do well. That's the other part about it. So it doesn't matter if I love throwing you know, a seam versus middle field closed. If we have a person who can't do it or doesn't like to do it or can't see it, well, then we're not going to call it. And so matching up what we do well to get our best players the ball as consistently as possible are my favorite calls. My least favorite calls are asking our guys to do something that they're not good at to throw it to someone or hand it to someone who isn't as good as someone else out there. And so that's where I get really frustrated as a coach. And so that's where I try to spend as much time as possible crafting things to get our best players the ball as often as possible. So Matthew, thank you for the question. Hopefully you enjoyed the answer, the flip uh, answer as well. I'll give a different window into uh, how I think about those types of questions nowadays, but I sincerely appreciate the engagement and the uh, question. If you have other questions that you think would be good videos, please leave them in the comments. Come at me at Twitter. I certainly appreciate the support for the channel. I will see you next time. Have a good one.